Right now I'm going to demonstrate the functionality of our Sampler Firmer Max for Live pack. This pack includes our Amplitude Threshold Driven Sampler device, a simple Max MIDI forwarding device, and our free expansion for the Max for Live Legacy Step Sequencer. With this pack, samples can be recorded, played, and sequenced all in real time. First thing you will need is an audio source. I'm going to use a standard vocal microphone to record audio from myself and my surroundings. Be sure the correct audio input device is selected in the audio tab of Live's Preferences panel. And make sure the in-out section of your channel strip is configured properly. Begin by switching on the sampler's input toggle. This will let your audio signal pass into the sampler and out through Live. You'll notice directly below this is another toggle resembling the arm session recording switch in the mixer section of a channel strip in Live. This toggle arms the sampler, preparing it to record and store samples. Sampler Firmer is an amplitude threshold driven sampler. So if the amplitude of your audio signal is greater than the threshold, the signal is recorded. The threshold can be set using the respective slider in the left quadrant of the device interface. Recording stops when the amplitude falls beneath the threshold and can only record for a maximum of two seconds. So ideally, this device is best suited for creating and working with percussive sounds, but is equipped to go beyond that. These captured samples are automatically indexed to MIDI pitch values, starting with the value shown below the sampler's arm toggle and counting up chromatically with each captured sample. So if you capture a sample at C4, then the next sample is captured at C sharp 4, then D4, and so on. You can also loop a range of MIDI pitch values for capturing your samples, which is useful if you want to sequentially re-record for the same MIDI pitch values in order to continuously create a fresh palette of sounds. This range can be configured using the MIDI pitch boxes below the loop range toggle. Also, below the MIDI pitch boxes is a toggle labeled Undo Last. Engaging this toggle will erase the most recently captured sample which comes in handy given the precision with which recording will need to occur. Repeatedly engaging this toggle will erase each sample, counting backwards chromatically until all your samples have been erased. As soon as the sample is captured, it can be played with a MIDI controller or sequencer. You can also record into the sampler as the sequence is being forwarded to it from the MIDI forward track. In the next panel of controls, just under the MIDI monitor, are three mappable dials for modulating the attack, release, and panning of sample playback. These parameters can be randomized by engaging the exclamation point toggle switches beneath the dials. A range of values by which these parameters can be randomized can be configured using the respective min and max dials beneath each of the exclamation point toggles. We've also included a button labeled C, with which to easily snap the panning dial back to center position. All of these parameters are mappable. The next panel to the right houses controls for modulating sample playback speed and direction. You can play a sample at slow, normal, or fast speed. The slow setting plays the sample at half speed, relative to the length of the sample. The normal setting plays the sample back unaffected, and the fast setting doubles the speed of playback. To reverse playback, engage the respective toggle switch. All these controls are likewise mappable, and these parameters can also be randomized by engaging the exclamation point toggle. Directly to the right of this toggle is a series of vertically stacked checkboxes. With these, you can configure which of the values are able to be selected through randomization, thereby creating different permutations for the randomization process. Directly below is a series of buttons for handling audio buffers. All of the samples captured by Sampler Firmer are written into a single audio buffer. The device uses MIDI pitch values to reference different time points within that buffer. To save your buffer, first select whether the buffer will be saved as a wave or an eighth, then click the Save Buffer button. 
a pop-up window will prompt you to set a file name and destination. And, once saved, the file will automatically load with your set. If you change the location of this file on your hard drive, you will need to click the Load Buffer button, navigate to the new file location, and select it the next time you load your set. If you do not save your buffer to a file, the samples you've captured will be lost. If you want to update the current buffers file to include any new samples you've captured, click the Amend Buffer button. And to completely erase the contents of the buffer, click the Clear Buffer button. The next panel to the right houses a preset module which allows you to save presets for all the sample playback modulation parameters. To store a preset, enter a preset name into the text field and click the Store button. If you make any changes to this preset and want to update the preset, click the Amend button. If you wish to rename the preset, provide a new name in the text field and click the Rename button. To erase a preset, simply click the Delete button. Make sure the preset you wish to alter is selected in the drop-down menu before making any changes. You can also select presets by using the dial to the right of the drop-down menu. This device has some interesting production applications. However, we think the performance applications are the most exciting. You can create a wealth of musical material in a relatively short amount of time, especially with just a couple effects and a looper placed at the end of the device chain. Using this device effectively will require some practice. The device's internal recording trigger is very sensitive to the given amplitude threshold, so a certain amount of technique and conviction will be required of you while capturing your samples. We're very eager to see what you can do with this device, so please don't hesitate to contact us with any media you produce using this pack. We would love to hear from you.